And you see this C? <laughs> I hope you can see what I did there. Papa Flamby's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he, he. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to now video. Back at Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar, and we are going to do something really exciting today. PewDiePie, pew pew pew. pew. Brofist, ma. Little Max Mofo reference. We are going to calculate the subderivative of the absolute value of x today. At the spot, x not being equal to zero, because some functions are not differentiable everywhere, and well, some points are just causing problems, just like zero right here. Too. You just can't differentiate this function right here at zero. And well, that's where subderivatives or superderivatives come into play. We are going to define the subderivative on a convex function, meaning a function which is open on top on a certain interval. This right here, by coincidence, is convex everywhere. You can check this for yourself. It's really quite easy to check using the triangle inequality. For those who have forgotten this right here is the definition of absolute value of x. And now you could ask yourself what the hell is the subderivative exactly? Well, let's take a look at something, namely f of x minus f of x0, where x0 is the spot that causes us problems, zero in this case, is greater or equal to c times x minus x0. And you see this c? <laughs> I hope you can see what I did there, is exactly our subderivative. Or should I say, we can find many, many subderivatives which satisfy this inequality right here. What exactly are those subderivatives? Well, we are calling it the subdifferential, and it's a certain interval, namely our c is bounded between some a and b at lowest interval. So you can take every value out of here, plug it in here, and it's going to satisfy this equation right here. And no, you are not mistaken, this really looks like a Lipschitz condition, Lipschitz continuity, because this C right here is real valued. And yeah, you are right, so if a derivative doesn't exist, we can kind of approximate it, you can say, using a Lipschitz condition on there to get something like a derivative. And it does work out, so you can kind of get a slope, a tangent line, on all those c's right here. Like I said, c is bounded in here, a and b. And it's really easy to find out what a and b are. They are just the left and right hand limit of the difference quotient. So namely, you can just divide by this and apply the left and right hand limit approaching this x0 right here. And you are going to get your upper and lower bounds. It's really quite easy to confirm. Try it out for yourself. Left as an exercise for the viewer. My boys. So a is namely just the left hand limit as x approaches x0 from the left, x0 minus, of f of x minus f of x0 over x minus x0. And at the moment we don't want this to be equal to zero, that's why we can divide by it. Same spiel for the right hand limit, that's just the limit as x approaches x0 from the right, x0 plus, of f of x minus f of x0 over x minus x0. And there we go, those are all the tools that we need to derive all the subderivatives, the subdifferential of the absolute value of x. Let's go ahead and get started. So for our a, we are going to get the limit as x approaches zero from the left, zero minus of. Okay, let's plug all the definitions in for our absolute value. So we have absolute value of x minus absolute value of zero over x minus zero. You see, this is just going to be positive zero in this case, it's a number, and this right here is just x down here. So we end up with the limit as x approaches zero from the left of absolute value of x over x. And at the moment, our x only has negative values to offer, so we are going to approach it purely from the negative side. And what happens if all of our x values are negative? Well, we are going to get negative x. So this is nothing but the limit as x approaches zero minus of negative x over x. And you see x and x is going to cancel out to negative one in the end. So this right here is just negative one. And if we take a limit of negative one of any constant, it's just the constant itself. So our lower bound, a, right here, is nothing but negative one. And let's continue with the upper bound, b is nothing but the limit as x approaches zero plus. And I'm going to, yeah, we, we are going to have this, but this is the same as this. 
absolute value of x over x. But right now, x is only going to take positive values all the damn time. So we have just positive x. This is nothing but the limit as x approaches 0 plus of x over x, which is just 1, you see. And this is another constant. Limit of a constant is just a constant itself, so 1. And there we go. So now we have found the subdifferential. So c can take all the elements. c is element of, well, negative 1 and 1. And this is how you can basically define all the derivatives without any usage of the delta distribution, for example, on our absolute value of x. Meaning that you could say this right here. We have the derivative. Or you don't need to take the partial derivative. You can take the normal one, but the partial derivative in one dimension is just the derivative itself. Never mind. It's nothing but either negative 1. If x is less than 0, we have this subderivative. If x is equal to 0, or it approaches 0 from the left and right, you can say. And also we have positive 1 if x is strictly greater than 0. Those are all the derivatives, and I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy this quick little video. If you did, like and subscribe, recommend the channel if you like. Watch those videos I create. This already helps so much to help the channel grow, the family grow. You can buy those t-shirts I created, never mind. Support the channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya! Hallo Mama.